And the reason that's why we record classes is because uh, sometimes there are those who would want to, to find out what you are taught. There are those who might have missed the class because of one reason or the other. So that's why we record classes. And there are those people who will say that that class was never conducted. So in other words, that is the reason as to why we do what we record our classes. So uh, today's topic, we are looking at topic, topic four. And topic four, we are going to focus on what we call, let me share my screen, allow me to share my screen. I hope you can see my screen. Hope you can see my screen. Um, maybe I can ask a few of you. Dan can moenta. Can you see my screen? Dan can. Can you be able to see my screen? Well, let me ask. This lady called the book. Michelle. Michelle, can you see my screen? Is Michelle here? Michelle Atam. I saw you in the meeting. Yeah, Michelle, I can see you are here. Yes, I can. Thank you. I also believe I saw you with a group of yeah, some students, huh? some students from the same department. Huh? So thank you so much, Michelle. I think I'll start my class. And today we are looking at topic four, and we are looking at internal and external peer. External and uh, internal and external peer. One thing that you must know is that uh, when you talk about PR being internal, we are saying that PR is being practiced within the organization. For example, a company like Safaricom Kenya or a company like, uh, say, for example, uh, KCB, that is a bank, Kenya Commercial Bank, or maybe a company like uh, the Bizitec University, those are an organization. You realize that they have what we call internal department, internal public relations department. And an internal PR department simply means that we get services from our own department. We do not outsource. We get our services from our own PR department. For example, if we for example, if we need some services, say for example, we need some posters to be to be printed, we need some, uh, say for example, a photographer, and he exists within our department, then since that simply means that we can get him from our organization. So that means that PR is being a practice internally. So again, it can be can be practiced externally. For example, maybe you want to print uh, to print uh, a magazine, or maybe you want to print uh, a poster. And the PR department that you have doesn't have the capacity to do that work. So in other words, what you do, you outsource outsourcing PR services or uh, going for PR services from an external provider is what we call external PR. That is what we call external PR activity or PR, uh, external PR services. So in other words, we're saying that PR can be both uh, practiced internally or it can be practiced externally. And internally, when you have the a PR department. Some organizations do not have PR department. And so they outsource the services. You go to a consultant, you go to a PR, PR uh, advisory, uh, advise, uh, advisory uh, maybe offices. They advise you, they plan PR activities for you, and so on and so forth. So in other words, again, you might, you, you, you might not have a uh, you might have an internal PR. In short, we are saying you might have an internal PR, or you may have, if you don't have an internal PR department, you can also look for these services externally. So in other words, PR can be practiced internally or externally. Therefore, when you talk about external PR activities, uh, these are what we call the strategic PR activities. 
and we are also we are going to look at those activities, the activities that PR engages itself with, and we are going to start with external PR activities, live our own internal PR activities. So these PR activities, we can also call them the strategic PR activities. For example, when you talk about media relations, media relations simply means you. Uh, an organization creating a good relationship between the PR, PR uh, between PR or an organization creating uh, what we call a good relationship between the media and itself. Who does this as a PR practitioner? A PR practitioner of, the, uh, of that particular organization or a PR officer of that particular organization is the one that creates this relationship, which is known as media relations. So in other words, an organization must have good public, must have good relationship with the media. And who creates this good relationship with the media? It's a PR officer of that organization. If you do not have a PR officer, then you can outsource one. To outsource one is you are going externally to provide a PR officer who will advise you in matters of public relations. So when you talk about media relations, it is simply seeking for, uh, publicity and it fosters positive interest by the press and other media in the organization. For example, you are told managers can create goodwill, managers can create an understanding through effective news coverage. So the media are not just a channel of communication. They themselves are key groups. So managers need to work with, or managers need to work at number one, earning respect, their respect. These managers, we are talking about PR managers. We are talking about PR officers. We are talking about PR and advertising officers. For example, if you go to some organization, you will realize that PR officers are called different names. Somebody said that a dog is a dog, it doesn't matter the kind of, uh, of the name that you call that particular dog. You can call it German Shepherd, if you like, you can call it a uh, Chihuahua, if you like, you can call it Tommy, if you like, you can call it Rex, and so on and so forth. But a dog is a dog, it doesn't matter the kind of name that you call it. In some organization, a PR officer will be called advertising. So public publicity and advertising officer. In some organizations, he will be called the communication officer. In some organization, again, he will be called um, a publicity officer or something like that, or a marketing and communication officer. When you hear such titles, just know that that is a PR officer. So in other words, this manager, what does he do? He tries and, and uh, as much as possible to earn their respect. Earning their respect simply means you try as much as possible for an organization to earn its respect to other public. Remember last, last week, we talked about public or public relations. And we said that these are groups of people that interact with an organization either directly or indirectly. And I gave a book by the name Frank Je Public Relations by Frank Jeskins and Daniel Yardy. If you go to our library, you're going to find that book. And Daniel Yardy, or Frank Jeskins, Frank Jeskins and Daniel Yardy, they say this, or they classify this group into various categories. For example, one of the categories is media. The next one is community. The third one, we are talking about opinion leader. And you know opinion leaders, when they make their opinion about your company or about uh, your services, they have a very, they have a, a very strong say in, uh, in the community. Or, so we have, let me just read them very fast. Eh? We have media, we have the community, we have opinion leaders, we have trade unions, we have manufacturers, we have uh, wholesalers, we have retailers, we have potential employees, we have employees, we also have people like uh, trade union, and so on and so forth. All these are public or public relations. So the work of this PR practitioner, 
you can call him a PR manager, needs to work at number one, ensuring that there is the respect that the company deserves, they can get it from the public, the public that we just mentioned. His work is to appreciate what is new, because a good PR practitioner must also understand something to do with the media. So if you're a media person and you're in this particular group, then, and you have done media, you still need to go and do something to do with public relations. Because a good media personnel must understand public relations, and a good public relations personnel must understand the media very well and how it works. So appreciating what is new. Number two, being truly creative. Remember last time we talked about uh, qualities of a good PR practitioner, and we said he must be very creative. Creative in the way he thinks, creative in the way he brings uh, what we call solutions to your organization's pro pro problems, and also creative in the way he leads his team. <laughs> so this person, again, called the PR manager, ensures that he meets the needs of journalists and producers. Last time we talked about uh, issues management, and we said that whenever an issue crops and it becomes a crisis, the first people to arrive in your organization are the media personnel. You cannot deal well with media personnel if you don't know how they work. So if you're a hospitality student and you have been chosen to be a PR officer, it is the highest time you go and do a course in the media that will help you know how the media works. Because you will be involved again in issues to do with writing of what we call press releases. Sometimes you'll be involved in uh, meeting the journalists and talking to them about an issue that is affecting your company. All these things, you need to know how to address the media. And how will you know about addressing the media and you know nothing about it? It can never work. And also you are told this manager builds their credibility with the media journalists and work. Remember, a media is a very strong tool. If, for example, say for example, you are a bank and the media uh, write an article about you or comes up with a feature story about you, maybe negative, or even imagine of something positive. Maybe this is a bank and an employer, several, uh, not, not several customers have gone to the ATM and on many occasions they have withdrawn fake notes. The media has focused on that, about your bank or about a certain bank. You can imagine what will happen the, the following day. The following day, people will go, withdraw their cash and everything, and that bank will, uh, can collapse at any time. Eh? So in other words, the thing that media is a very powerful tool, and therefore, if you are doing public relations, you must also know something about the media, because media is one of the publics of public relations. And so you must be able to know how to deal and understand. And for you to know how to deal with something, you must understand it. And then uh, there are so many. He open uh, this manager open must be open and honest, or must create an open and honest media relations policy. He must have the willingness to deal with unfavorable news, because not every news will be given to the media about your organization will be favorable. Remember, good bad news is good news to the media. Anything that happens or anything bad that happens that is good news to the media personnel. So sometimes you you find yourself in the wrong side of the wrong side of things, and the media, the first people to get in the organization over that particular story. So you might find yourself uh, that the news is not favoring you. How will you deal? So a good PR manager must be able to deal with unfavorable news and uh, concern the organization that they work for. Then. Uh, that is number one, you're talking about media relations. And then number two, uh, strategic PR activity is publicity. When we had our first class, we defined publicity as making something known to the public. If you make something known to the public, you are doing what is called publicity. If you are letting some information to the public domain, that is also known as publicity. So dissemination of purposefully planned and executed messages through selected media, to further the interest of an organization or a person. In other words, a PR practitioner will be involved in publicity. Suppose this is a new organization and people know, 
nothing about the organization. It is the role of a PR practitioner to ensure that there is publicity of this particular organization. Then we also have financial reason, and it aims to foster supportive relationships and to handle communication within the financial calendar with stakeholders, investors, and financial journalists. Yeah, I believe you, maybe for those who like reading newspapers, so you find like, for example, there is a, there is a, a section in the newspaper that uh, there is a financial statement or there is a financial advertisement of the newspaper concerning maybe a certain bank. You can call it bank XYZ. Why do they put it there? Maybe they are telling you that these are the profits that we made for the whole of maybe 2020. They are doing that for publicity purposes. They are doing that to also to attract uh, what we call investors. There are people maybe who are looking for where to invest. They are also doing that to ensure that uh, uh, to ensure that people can trust them. Imagine a bank that has worked for a hundred years or even seventy years. That's a bank that it actually tells you that that bank is not likely to collapse anytime. So people or investors are looking for organizations that they can trust with their own, with their finances. So sometimes, as a PR practitioner of an organization, you will be involved in financial relations. You'll be involved in fostering and supporting relationships and handling communication within financial calendars with stakeholders, with investors, and financial journalists. Then from there, we also have public affairs. We also have public affairs. Sorry for the noise. I think people have come from the country. We also have public affairs. And when we talk about public affairs, public affairs is, uh, let me just start by saying this, that every government for a parastatal, every government parastatal, or maybe we can call it every serious organization. They usually have what we call a public affairs office. And the purpose of a public affairs office is to deal with issues that concern the public. For example, think of a place where you live and the transformers are vandalized. Every now and then you are a transformer, you are given a transformer by KPLC, that is Kenya Power Advisory Company. Uh, you stay for some few weeks or months, and then it is vandalized or it is stolen. So those offices, they are usually created so that if the public have a complaint to make, then they visit the public affair, public affairs office. If you have seen or you know the people who does uh, or who vandalizes the transformer, the only place you can go is the public affairs office, KPLC, and complain the issue. That way, you are trying to do what? Trying to tell the organization that I know the people who does this and kindly help us because uh, they are bringing us or they are bringing us down or they are something like that. Eh? So it can cover strategic communication, planning, and deal with various audiences at corporate level, at level government, press, public organization, city shareholders trade union and the general public. So public affairs is another strategic public relation activity. Then number five, we have lobbying. And when you talk about lobbying, uh, which of course we are going to cover it as a topic, lobbying is a process whereby a community or people, community or people, they identify so we are saying uh, that when you talk about lobbying, lobbying is a process whereby if, for example, a community is facing some problem, maybe, for example, uh, you, have, uh, you need water, you, uh, or maybe you need electricity, 
maybe you have very poor road network and you need the government to crop in and help out. Uh, maybe you can use people called lobbyists. A lobbyist is a, is a person who is highly connected with very powerful people or very powerful opinion leaders in a country. Such that these people can push their agenda. You have had the issues being discussed in parliament. You have had an issue being discussed in parliament about maybe poor road networks between point A and point B within the country. Or maybe, for example, vandalism or something to do with the cattle rustling between community A and community B. This one mostly is done by people called lobbies. A lobbyist is a person who is highly connected to these people, the politicians, high influential people within the government that can put that can push their agenda through and it is discussed in parliament or discussed somewhere and it bears fruit. So that is another peer activity. It's lobbying. You can see it is written in bracket government, so affairs. Eh? Then apart from that, we have industrial relations, and industrial relations is another public relation or strategic public relations activity, and it covers communication with organizations within the industry of which the organization is part. For example, trade administration, research. We also have corporate advertising, and uh, corporate advertising is another strategic public relations activity, and it's this way, when we talk about it, we are talking about it treats uh, treat the organization as the product and is the face and voice of the organization. Corporate advertising can strengthen an image. For example, yeah, it can strengthen an image. Uh, like last week, I told you to read on uh, uh, types of images. Eh? One of the images is corporate image. Another image is a multiple image, another one is mirror image, another one is wish image, among many others. So when you talk about a corporate advertising, is you're looking at a, an organization, the way it advertises itself, maybe through the type of colors it has. Like when you look at any color that is green, it is either Safaricom or KCB. But those cars, they differ in a way. The one for Safaricom is darker. The one for, for, for KCB is Robinac in a way. So, like for example, when you see a red car, eh, and, uh, I mean, when you see a, let's talk about green, eh, you might think of Safaricom or KCB. Those are corporate cars. Every organization has got its own corporate car. If you go to, let's say, for example, you're talking about Fly 540, uh, this one is called Fly 540, yeah? you will see that it has got an orange car. So in other words, when you see an aircraft that is orange passing above you yeah, or on the sky, you tend to imagine that that is what? That is a Fly 540 plane. Why do you imagine? Because it is the only one that has that particular corporate car. Again, when you talk about KQ, you will see the corporate cars of KQ and you will say that that, is, that plane belongs to KQ and so on and so forth. So those are corporate advertising. We can do corporate advertising through our cars, through our slogan, and so on and so forth. So corporate ad advertising can strengthen some of uh, the organization's image. And there must be no significant gap between the organization, corporate maker, and their customer perception. Products, services, and you. The next point is what we call corporate social responsibility. When you talk about corporate social responsibility, it's another strategic public relations activity, whereby corporate social responsibility simply means giving back to the community what it deserves. And what does that mean? It simply means that, uh, say for example, a company like, uh, like uh, a company like, uh, I'm thinking of Standard Chartered Bank, 
standard chartered bank, a company like ABSA Bank, a company like Deto. You have had them being involved in some issues. Deto is involved in Deto Heart Fund, and they raise funds towards those people who have got uh, what we call uh, problems of the heart, so that these people can go, can be sponsored, can go somewhere where they can be treated properly, or they can have a successful surgery. When you talk about a uh, standard chartered marathon, they also have an objective why it is there. When you talk about Safaricom Foundation, when you talk about uh, Equity Bank with Wings to Fly, Wings to Fly is simply there to help the people who come from less fortunate family, those people and I mean, invest those people who come from less fortunate family and uh, they are clever and they do not have money to take them back to maybe college or even high school. Equity bank crops in. So in other words, those are so corporate social responsibility. That when an organization is simply trying to, to give thanks to the community for what they have made them become. Because without the community, equity bank will not be where it is. Without the community, the debt will not be where it is. So it's like in Kiswahili we say, Nikama Kurdisha Mkono, Nikama Kusema Ampateni. By coming up, maybe you can even decide to, to drill four holes in the community, to build schools in that community. You can even build the infrastructure in that particular community. And that one is called corporate social responsibility, giving back to the community what it deserves. Now, that's the that activity. The next one is what we call community involvement. Do not uh, do not uh, confuse between corporate social responsibility and community involvement. Like for example, when you talk about community involvement, is uh, peer specialists are often called upon to represent their companies in various local community groups to assist in engaging local public opinion and to respond with suitable community programs as visible manifestation of manager sense of CSR. So there is a difference between community involvement uh, with what we call the CSR. Community involvement is where PR is involved or the organization is involved in the community development. For example, when an organization raises funds or when an organization decides to, to do what? To go and clean a city. Maybe this city has got all uh, blocked, uh, uh, blocked what? Blocked CAJs, then a lot of uh, dust, and so, I mean, uh, garbage, and so on and so forth. And now the, 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 the organization or organization XYZ decides we are going to clean the city. That is community involvement. You're involving yourself with the community. But when you talk about CSR, CSR is giving back to the community. Then there is what we call sponsorship. Sponsorship is another one. And when you talk about sponsorship, you don't mean the one that we usually know. You know, when you talk about sponsorship, some people might think of sponsors. Eh? We are not talking about the sponsors that people usually think. Eh? Eh? Now, when you talk about sponsorship, now here, we are talking about uh, where a company buys exclusivity for an event or sport or competition. For example, we might decide to sponsor an event. We might decide to sponsor a, a photojournalist to go abroad and represent Kenya. There was a time uh, when uh, Kenyans were being urged to at least do what we call donate like 20 shillings and above to Harambe Stars, our national team Harambe Stars, to go abroad and uh, do what, and play soccer. And the people did it very well, only that uh, they went there and they were defeated. But that is sponsorship. We can still do sponsorship. We can even sponsor what we call uh, education. 
Like for example, there are some organizations or universities where they sponsor a student who performs very well. So if you are a student doing a degree program and you get a first class honor, they sponsor you to choose a university of your choice abroad, be it in UK, be it in USA, United States of America, be it in Australia, and then they sponsor your master's degree. That is sponsorship. And then when you come back, you give back to the university where you come from. So after finishing your master's degree, you come back and work for that particular organization. So sponsorship is like that. So if you are zero on Baba Bahari, that is not sponsor. No, that is not sponsorship. That is cohabiting. Eh? That is not right. Then number uh, eleven, another strategic uh, public relations activity is information services. That the PR office should take the lead in coordinating the provision of information to the public media about company activities. And this will often include educational material, which may aim to increase awareness and understanding of both the company and its industry. So it is the role of a PR practitioner or is a strategic public relations activity that PR practitioner should take the lead to ensuring that material that gives information to potential clients is available. Like how did you come to know about our university? Maybe you knew it through an advert that ran on TV. Maybe you saw a, a very big billboard on your way. Maybe you are going to to where? To town? Or maybe you are using Mombasa Road, Mombasa Superhighway, and then you saw a very big billboard saying intake in progress. Huh? So that's how you came to know. So it is the work of a PR practitioner to ensure that they take lead in coordinating the provision of information. They make sure that that information is in the public domain about number one, company's activity. And this will often include number one, educational material, which may aim to increase awareness and understanding of both the company and its industry or industry, and then their products and services. The next strategic public relations activity is counseling and consulting. It's counseling and consulting. For example, last week we did a topic on issues management. And we said that if you don't with an issue, if you don't deal with an issue, we said that an issue is a point of conflict between two people or more. And if you don't deal with this point of conflict, then this point of conflict may when they may graduate to become something like uh, what we call a crisis. He said in Swahili, So in this scenario, Ufa is, uh, Ufa is, uh, is, uh, is an issue and uh, Ukuta is a crisis. So counseling and uh, consulting comes in whereby maybe for example there is a crisis a crisis has just occurred people maybe there was fire that burnt everything down and because this company was not prepared to deal with fire then we can have PR practitioners coming to advise them how to do it or maybe there was a strike that simply did what we call uh, portrayed the organization's image negatively the reason as to why company means many companies don't want their staff to go on site is because the image that they have built for so many years might be destroyed through that site. Maybe the issue might be poor sanitation. The issue might be poor pay. So you can imagine your employees go, I mean, going on site to do what? To, 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 to expose you that you pay peanuts or going on site to do or to put their, I mean, the organization to that in and on public. You can imagine the kind of uh, uh, negative image you are going to get. So therefore, if such a thing happens, we have PR practitioners who are going to help you. They are going to counsel you. They are going to consult with you. 
so that at least, of course, you might not be where you, I mean, if, for example, image, uh, your image was, was well known in the public, of course, it has been destroyed and you have now to start now doing what? Building it again. You will have people who will cancel you. Again, remember the way we define public relations by the Mexican statement. We say that this is an art and science of analyzing trends. After analyzing trends, predicting their consequences, and then you cancel organizational leaders. After canceling organizational leaders, you implement planned programs of action that will benefit both the organization and the public. So canceling is one of a PR activity or a strategic PR activity. Then the next point is that uh, there is what we call crisis management. I'm not going to talk, talk on crisis management because last week we talked about issues management and we said that if you don't deal with an issue properly, it can graduate and become what we call a uh, crisis. Then apart from that, design and writing. It's a strategic PR activity. A PR, a PR manager, will be involved in printing material, printing material, coming up with brochures, coming up with very clean brochures, very nice booklets about the organization and its products and services. You will be involved even in printing adverts on the newspapers, also taking uh, adverts to the TV and radio. So you must be a very good person in terms of design and writing. In some organizations, you realize that they have a PR practitioner, but when it comes to design and writing, it's very poor. So it simply means when it comes to design and writing, the organization is going to outsource a PR practitioner to do that because his PR, their PR practitioner or his or her PR practitioner cannot do that. Then we also have number 15, what we call event management, events. In most cases, you will find that uh, organization is going to be involved in events. Uh, maybe you are expecting the president to come and open your organization officially. That's an event. Maybe you are expecting the president or maybe a very high profile person in the, or in the government to come and give a speech concerning something you have that is an event you have to be a very good event uh, organizer maybe it is the anniversary of the organization the organization has it is an anniversary that's an event you need a PR practitioner to tell you these are the colors these are the kind of things that you are going to organize that particular event so that it is successful to bring about what we call the PA public address system to organize where the staff will sit, to come up with a red carpet if it is needed, to ensure that uh, the dress code is okay and so on and so forth. That is event management, and that one is a PR or is a strategic PR activity. And we also have corporate uh, hospitality, market support, PR management. PR management, there are, there are so many, there are 18, and these are not the this is not the end of them. There are so many. If you go to France, just yes, there is what we call the A to Z responsibilities of a PR man. A to Z, from A to Z responsibilities of a PR manager. So then uh, I will add another, another thing here I want us to look at, but I will start by giving an example so that you can understand it. Eh? This one is called P planning PR program and reason for planning a PR program. Uh, yeah, plan, let's look at reason for planning PR program. And then we are going to look at the six point planning program of a PR practitioner. So when you talk about uh, reasons for planning PR program, number one, the reason as to why anything that comes on the PR day is a program. Any work that comes on the PR desk is a program. And the reason when you receive any work, you just you just don't jump into it. You will have to do what to plan. Compano, uh, let me just give an example. Say for example, there is a negative uh, 
we have just come up we have just come out of a strike you know a strike has already dented the image of the organization and we need now to sit down and try to remove that dent that was created through strike so number one that is a problem remote trying to build the image or trying to remove that dent that was created by staff uh, when they went on strike because of ABC or because of some reason. So number one, there are reasons for plan PR program. So number one, you need to set targets for the PR operation against which results can be assessed. Number one, you need to come up with targets. Targets are goals. You need to come up with targets for PR operations against which results can be accessed. Targets are very important because at the end of a certain period of time, you will check your results versus the target or versus the standards that you gave. And you will check, you will ask yourself, did I achieve or did I not achieve? Number two is to estimate the working hour and other costs involved. The reason as to why you do planning for a PR program is also to estimate the working hour. You can say you are going to work for three months and we will need maybe 3.5 million locations. So the reason as to why we plan is to estimate the working hour and other costs involved. Number three, the reason as to why we plan for PR program is to select priorities which will control the number, the timing of operation and the program. The reason as to why we plan is to say, now this issue will be number one, this one will be number last. So you prioritize on the most important to the least important. And lastly, is to decide the feasibility of carrying out declared objectives according to the availability of sufficient staff of the right caliber. So number one, number E, number four, we are saying that you also need people who have got the quality carry out that particular task. If you are having a PR program, you just don't think anybody who has done PR or anybody who calls himself a PR practitioner. You still need a professional person to do that particular work for you. So then there is what we call the six point funding model. So then, uh, this brings, brings us to what we call the six-point planning model. The six-point planning model. Remember, we have talked about the reason as to why you as a PR practitioner, whenever you are given a task, maybe it's, for example, it's about publicity. You need to plan about it. Maybe for example, it's a crisis, or already a crisis occurred. And now the image was dented. You need to take, I mean, to remove the dent that was created by your employee so that we can be where we were before. That is a plan, you need to sit down and plan. So by so doing, then we come up with what we call the six point planning, PR planning model. This one is in that particular book I'm talking about called the Frank Jeffkins and Daniel Yardy. And number one, for us to understand this particular process, it's a six point planning model, I will give a scenario so that we can understand it properly. Yeah? Assume that uh, that uh, employees have gone on strike. Assume that employees have gone on strike. Assume this is uh, company X Y Z, and employees have gone on strike. And the reason as why they have gone on site, maybe it's because of poor pay and poor sanitation. Poor sanitation, yani water is not clean, the toilets are not good, 
they have just decided let's go on strike and they have gone on strike. Number one is a PR practitioner. Already they have done that. Is to appreciate the situation. And appreciating the situation simply means you accept that the situation exists. Don't deny. Don't say, no, it did not happen. It did not happen. It has never happened. This, no, you appreciate the situation. By appreciating the situation is accepting that the situation really exists that situation really exists because the moment you own a situation and you accept that it really exists then it gives you it gives you uh or it helps you to now think of a, of a solution to offer but the moment you start now denying it did not happen they cannot do this i cannot imagine that it happened then you will still stay in denial and you might not come up with a uh, very good solution. So the number one is to appreciate that the, so, uh, the problem or the situation occurred by accepting what has occurred and now you start looking for solutions. Then the next thing, remember this employees went on strike. The image of the organization was dented and we need to take it back. So we need to come up with a program and one of the programs is the six point planning model. Number one, we have appreciated the situation. We have accepted that anyway, something happened. I mean, that happened. And then the next thing that you do is you define or you come up with what we call objectives. Come up with objectives. Maybe objective number one is to ensure that the image is cleansed again. If there is a word like that in here, it's cleansed again or it's painted again. Hmm? Number two, objective. Come up with very nice objectives. Number one, objectives that are smart, objectives that are realistic. Don't say that I am going to take 10 years or I'm going to, to employ 2 million people or PR practitioners to help me deal with this situation. So come up with objectives that are realistic, that are, that are smart. Must simply mean um, that are specific, number one, that are measurable, that are achievable, that are realistic, that are high. Time bound simply means that within a specific period of time, I must have done it. Then, after coming up with an uh, objective, then you must define the public. You must know the people who have been asked. Remember, we talked about public or public relations. You must know public A that was affected is employees. Because they went on site. Public B that was affected is maybe the community. Public C that was affected is the media. Public D that was affected is stakeholder. Public E that was affected is supplier, hmm? wholesaler. You list the public that have been affected by that right. Then after that, defining the public, you select the media and techniques. Because you realize that for you, then you define or you select the media and techniques simply means select the best media that can meet these people. For example, you want to talk to the community. You want to talk to the community. You will choose the best possible media so that you can reach. You will use the best possible media so that you can reach the community. Failure to win, the message will not get to the, to the people. For example, maybe you live in a in Roy Tok Tok, or maybe you live in uh, Mantera, and you want to get to, to, to reach the public. Maybe the public that was affected most was the community. And you know these people, some of them do not have, you cannot use what we call WhatsApp. You cannot use Facebook to communicate to them. Some of these people do not have such gadgets. Eh? So you select the best possible media to speak to them. You can radio because radio is I think even our phones 
be it Mulika Muizi, be it a, a very good smartphone, be it S9, and so on and so forth. They have radio station. They have got what we call. They can, they can you can access radio through this particular gadget. So you select the media that you see. Okay. After selecting the media that you're going to use, then you plan for the budget. You come up with a budget. A budget that is not uh, exaggerated, but a budget that will make sure that, uh, a budget that will, uh, will incorporate everything. Because if you if you bring a budget that is, uh, say for example, you need like five million, you bring a budget of one million, then that one million will not be enough for you. If you bring a budget of maybe seven million, you have you have a, you have over quoted the budget which is not right again. Eh? So you plan and you come up with a budget that will help you carry out that particular program. Remember, our program is to do what? Our program is to take the image back where it was, or to yeah something like that. Then after that, you assess the result. After doing everything, you need to go back and ask yourself, did we meet the objective? And the objective are measured against the result. Objective number one, and the results that we have, are they, are they okay? Is our objective, is our, is our result synonymous to our objective? Something like that. Eh? If it is not, then you need to go back and do the plan, I mean, and plan again. You need to go back and plan again. And you know, when you go back and plan again, you're also going to spend more. So a very good PR practitioner needs to do a very good program that is going to be effective. So unless there is a question, the rest of the thing, like for example, the six point planning model, it has been discussed in detail, appreciating the situation, and then there are methods of appreciating the situation. Then there is definition of objectives. What is an objective? Then there is what we call definition of public. What is a public? And then uh, there is the range of print a PR media. You can use radio. You can use TV. You can use social media. You can use the press, just the newspaper, and the magazine. And then there is planning a budget. You come up with a budget. And then lastly, you're told assessment of results. Assessment of results, you are checking the results against the standard that you had set. And then uh, I think we also have the 10 basic publics according to Frank Jeskin here. We have the community, potential employees, employees, suppliers, financial services, distributors, consumers, opinion leaders, trade union, the media, and so on and so forth. Unless there is a a uh, question, I will stop at that point. The rest of the information that you see there, I just to equip you more. Any questions? Do we have any questions? Do we have any questions? Do we have any questions? If there is no question, <clears throat> then I cannot just leave you like that. There are some things that I need you to do. We are in topic four. And today we started our class late simply because uh, the Department of Media, no, not the Department, the School of Media Arts and uh, Engineering, no, Media Engineering and ICT, we were having a meeting that took us uh, quite uh, that took quite uh, that took our time, eh? and therefore, when we talk about uh, today's topic, I think I have at least today's note topic notes. They are there. You can download those notes as we speak. I've also uh, opened the today's discussion. It is there. You can open it. You can start doing it as we speak. And then there is quiz four. Quiz four is open for you. And uh, to remind you, there is a, there is assignment one. When I look at this assignment one, 
if I can click it, I can see only 144 out of 226 have done the assignment. Remember this assignment is going to close in the next four hours, 25 minutes. The assignment that the funga in the next four hours, 25 minutes. So it's only 144 students out of 226 to have done that particular assignment. If you know that you have not done that assignment, between now and five o'clock today, between now and four o'clock today, make sure that you have done that assignment. Because in the next four hours, 25 minutes to be five o'clock. So make sure you do that assignment and we call it a day. The next thing is about uh, your password for the attendance. Let me give you the password for the attendance. And there are people who are not taking their attendance. So if you don't take your attendance between now and what time? Between now and two, you will find that I have good absence. Do not complain to me that I, that I take you absent and you are in class. That one, you will have yourself to blame. So, that is, I'm trying to share. So that is the password for today's attendance. You can uh, use it and uh, you take your attendance. So I'll you next week, I'll stop at that point to also allow you or give you time to go and do the activities that are waiting for you. So come Hakuna Linkina Minister. John, you have a question. What is the question? John doesn't want to talk, but uh, I have shared the the what the password for the attendance. That is five small t small o small d small t small c five small t small o small d small t small c. Thank you.